Hey YouTube. So the other day I was talking about knots and probably one of the boringest subjects in the world is talking about knots. However, uh, you know this has to go with um, making money with your sawmill and knowing about different things. So uh, you can sell all the hardwood you want to anybody you want and it doesn't have to be graded and you don't really have to specify any specific things because they sort of buy it um, hardwood as if they're the ones who are making the decision. But when it comes to uh, framing lumber and like this is eastern white pine and that's what we're talking about today, eastern white pine because that's what I have a lot of around here. <clears throat> um, when it comes to eastern white pine that lumber has to be graded. And the other day I talked a little bit about the knots and stuff just to give you a little you know heads up on what was coming. So when you look like at this stick right here, this piece of wood, this is what's known as a red knot. And you know obviously it's reddish brown and it's solid. There's it grew, this is a live branch that grew, you know, with the live tree. Then here you have something, this is a branch that was dead because it's, it's called a black knot because there's bark around it. A better example of that is right here though. You can see the black knot there all the way around. And um, then there, besides the colors of the knot and the description, um, a knot, well let me just show you one here. This one here. <coughs> This knot here is a good example of what's called a spike knot. So in other words, the branch was basically where my finger's aiming, that, that direction. And the saw cut through it, either lengthwise, in other words, it would have cut right through the middle of a branch, or um, it cut on an angle like this one did. So in other words, the branch was coming out of here on an angle, but, you know, however we laid the log on the mill, started cutting it. So the reason I'm talking about this stuff is because if you can't, uh, if you don't understand the grading system, which is kind of, you know, when you read through the whole thing, the grading system is sort of a uh, really old-fashioned description of stuff, but yet they t took the time to de describe, you know, the things that are important about wood. So, um, anyway, like I say, you got spike knot, and this could also be called like here a red knot and uh, then you have a black knot which would be like this one which you know has the bark around it so just remember that the black knots were a dead branch that a tree grew around the red knots were um, a live branch that the tree grew around which is you know more desirable because it's intact so then when they talk about um, branch of knots and stuff, they classify the knot as to size. So, um, like say, a knot this size here, let's say this size right here, a knot this size is considered what they call a pin knot, P-I-N, pin knot. And the reason that they call it a pin knot is simply because it's uh, less than a half of an inch in diameter. Now something like this, which is probably about a half an inch, that a half an inch up to three quarters of an inch is called a small knot. So a small knot is a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Now this is getting somewhere because in the end you'll understand a little bit about how to grade it. But it's going to take a while for me to get to there. It's not going to happen in this video. I'm just showing you about the different knots. So, uh, just to go, to go over that, uh, less than a half an inch is a pin knot, P-I-N, half an inch up to three quarters of an inch, and you're talking about the width. Uh, this could probably be classified as a, uh, even though it's a spike knot in its cut, it could probably be classified as a, uh, um, a uh, small knot, because it's no more than three quarters of an inch wide this way. But we'll see whether as we go, whether this direction matters at all. But anyway, this would be a small knot, okay? And then um, a medium knot uh, is anything from three quarters of an inch up to one and a half inches in diameter. 
So if you look at this size of this, and let's just measure it this way, it's probably two inches there. So this would be considered not a, uh, a medium knot, but this is actually a large knot. So a large knot is anything over an inch and a half. Okay, so a medium knot is something that's three quarters to an inch and a half, let's say, something like this. A large knot is anything bigger than an inch and a half in diameter. Okay. So, you know, that's how they classify that. And then they have a couple of variations of that. They have what's known as a sound knot. So, if you, um, and just find a good example of a sound knot. Well, you know, even though it's small, this one here is not a good example of a sound knot. Even though it's small, a sound knot basically has no lines around it. It doesn't look like there's an outline made on it like there is on these, like on something like this. I mean, this is probably considered a sound knot because you can see where it's actually tight there along the one edge. But there's still some, you know, mark on this side. But that knot's going to stay where it is because there's no way for it to actually come out of there. So you have what's known as a, a, a sound knot which has, a sound knot has, is a knot with no decay in it. So, if you look at, um, like, say this knot here, I don't know if you can, how well you can see that, but this knot has, like, um, holes in it. You can see that it's starting, to, it was starting to decay, okay? So, uh, that would be an unsound knot. A sound knot is one that doesn't have decay in it, like I was saying with the, well, something like this one. This has no decay in it, so this is a sound knot. The other one was an unsound. So sound, and where is that unsound? And this would be unsound. You can see where it's got some decay in there, a little bit of dry rot, I would call that. So you can see the difference between them. So sound, unsound. And then, um, besides those two classifications, they have either a tight knot, a loose knot, or a fixed knot. So, a tight knot is one that retains its position in the wood. So, in other words, you can see that this is not going to come out of there. That's going to stay where it is, especially on this side of the board. You know, it's hard to... I, I was looking for pieces just laying around that I had with knots in, but... Anyway, a, a sound knot, or a fixed knot rather, a tight knot, I'm sorry, let me, let me start over again. A tight knot is a knot that retains its position in the lumber like these, okay, something like that. A loose knot is one uh, that does not retain its position in the lumber, so that would have been something like this, because that's already gone. So when we cut through here, the knot fell out as we were cutting, so that, that's called a loose knot. And then a fixed knot is a knot that retains its position but be, can be knocked out with pressure. So, um, let's see, I had one here that I thought would be a good example of that. Yeah. Um, let me get a hammer here and then we'll take a look at what this looks like. So I got a hammer here and we have a knot, and, and what, what we're looking at here is, this is a fixed knot. It's holding its position. However, um, the definition of fixed knot is a knot that retains its position but can be forcibly moved with pressure. So, that's what was known as a uh, fixed knot. In other words, it was staying there by itself, but once I put some pressure on it, it wasn't going to stay there anymore. So th this is just, you know, something about the different <coughs> kind of knots and how they classify that. And I had told you the other day, just to recap that, that a wain is like bark on the edge of wood. Now this is a piece of oak, but I am talking about eastern white pine, but it, this is what I had that had a good example. But it's not just bark on the edge of the wood, okay? It's not just bark that's makes the wane. The wane is also any part or edge of the wood that's not where the wood is gone. In other words, the board face is here, but it runs off. That's a wane. Okay, so you can imagine that they named wane 
to a board because it was cut close to the edge of the log because that's basically what that is. And then um, besides the wing, you have things that are checks. Now, for all intents and purposes, this looks like a check from that end, from that view that you have, that crack that's in there. We could say that that's a, a check from that side. However, the problem with that is, is it's not really a check. What this is, is if you look at this thing, if you can see that there, this is actually a shake where the wood has separated with the annual ring, either right at it or between them, but that's what that is. So that would be a shake, okay? And there's a classification for those as well, but I'm just going to give you the name today for now. So this is a shake. Again, it looks like it's a split. But when you look at it and you see it's with the with the grain, if it was a straight line, like if it came across in a certain straight pattern, then it wouldn't be a, a check. Okay, it would be just a split or a a, a crack in the wood. Just say uh, the word that they use is split. So splits have a, a a way of determining what they are as well. But I'm just going to stop here with the knot part so that. You don't get overwhelmed with this thing because uh, there's a lot to it. The words are simple, they're easy for the English language, but it's complicated um, to remember it all. You know, like just the fact that you have a pin knot, a small knot is a half inch to three quarters, a medium knot is three quarters to one and a half, and a large knot is anything over one and a half inches doesn't seem like it's you know a very complicated thing however it's hard to remember that then then you have you know loose knot fixed knot and stuff like that so anyway uh, just to go over that uh, again a sound knot is a knot that doesn't that doesn't have any rot in it like this one this has no rot in it okay from what we can see here on the face of the board but obviously this one here um, you can see like it has a little bit of dry rot to it. I don't know if you can see that very well there, but it it does have rot to it. So that would be an unsound knot. Okay? So sound and unsound. And then the three sizes. And then a tight knot is like I said is one that retains its position. So that would be this. This is going to keep itself there, so is basically this one's not going to be easily knocked out of there. You can see that it's growed in on the edges, even though there's a little rot here. This would be an unsound knot, but it still, uh, you know, is a fixed knot, or I mean a tight knot. So a tight knot, just to go over it again, and I'm even getting a little confused myself, but a tight knot is a knot that retains its position in the lumber, which is this one, okay, something like that, tight knot. A loose knot is a knot that does not retain its position. In other words, for all intents and purposes, even though we knocked this out of here, we could say that was a loose knot because it didn't retain its position. But we know that I just knocked it out. <laughs> it was wanting to retain its position until I put pressure on it. And once I put, uh, uh, once we went from it being a loose knot, which is why it's not there at the moment, to a fixed knot, which is it's there and it's tight in place, but it's able to be knocked out, which is the demonstration I showed you. Uh, so, you know, like I say, the, it's a little bit confusing, but at the same time, if you think about it, it's very simple. It's, uh, they made it easy to understand for graders. I don't think that, uh, you know, a lumber grader, uh, it's not rocket science, but at the same time, it's, you know, you got to have a good grasp on uh, the different terminology that they have there. And then um, a check, just go over this a little bit, a check, looking at the board that way, you know, we could call, we could say that that looks like a check. So I'm just going to call it a check for the moment. But a check is actually when you get a crack because of drying. It's like normally ch checks come from drying lumber. All right. Now we know that this piece, because I showed it to you before, um, is not just a check because it's just it's not just separated from drying like what this looks like so what we what we've got here is we've got a shake 
it's called a shake because even though it has a crack in it, it's with the annual ring. Okay, if it was straight through and it tore the lumber, you know, in a straight pattern, then then you could say that that would be a um, uh, a, uh, a split. Okay, or a check rather. Now they actually have, you know, wood does get called checks and then it gets called splits. And the difference between a check is a check is wood that has, for all intents and purposes, split due to drying as opposed to a split. And think about splitting wood. I mean, we don't call, when we cut firewood, we don't call it checking. We call it splitting. Okay, so uh, just to give you a little example, if I take a piece of firewood here and I, whoop, and I split it, okay, you can see that there's a straight line there. It doesn't go with any particular annual ring. So this is known as a split, just like a split firewood, okay? But when you see it go with the annual ring, okay, like that, Right? It goes with the annual ring. That's called a shake. And then checks would be wood that cracks due to drying. So those are the different names of the, of the types of wood. And uh, now we're, again, we're talking about eastern white pine. So uh, just to do it again. A check is a separation in the wood that occurs from seasoning. So if we only look at that board from that direction, we can say there's a check in there and it came from drying it. Whether it was in the kiln or air dried, it doesn't matter. This is possibly, you know, you could have had a, a, a sticker out this far. The edge is cracked. There was no paint on it. Maybe that's what happened. But that's not what happened with this one. But I'm just saying that's why you get these uh, uh, checks. Okay, so then they have things like surface checks, which I'll go over later, a star check, and a through check, which, you know, you could have a check that just comes along this edge, doesn't go all the way through, and I'll explain that as I go later on in another video. But, um, so the check comes from wood that's dry, being dried in most cases, in other words, seasoned wood, okay, that's a check. A uh, split is wood that cracks from one side to another and it's not with an annual ring okay so that's split as opposed to a check which uh, you know this is like a forcibly done thing okay so a split then is defined as a separation of wood through a piece of the lumber to the opposite or adjoining side and that's what you've got here now you can have um, checks in wood that only like say if you have depending upon the grain now this one here is actually a quarter sawn board but if you have a flat sawn board where you have the annual rings running you know lengthwise in the happy face I'll call it uh, then then that is possible that that could either be a check or a split, but it could be a check that doesn't go all the way through. In other words, it, it only comes through part of the wood. And and I'll go over this better as I as I go. And then like I say, as far as the sizes of that thing, um, in grading eastern white pine, a small check is not more than a thirty-sixth or a thirty-second of an inch wide. So it's very narrow. Okay, and I don't want to get in a whole lot of the numbers at this point. But then a medium check is like a 32nd of an inch, but not longer than 10 inches. So there's a whole lot of stuff to this. And, and this video is about learning how to recognize something of value as opposed to looking at wood and saying, well, that's junk. You know, so if, some, if you, you take the time, you cut up a nice a pile of wood for yourself and you have some lumber, and you're thinking it's all good stuff and somebody who knows what they're talking about walks in there looks at it and says that's all junk I don't want that you need to know what they're talking about okay so that you uh, can give them the product that they're looking for so then splits like I say are defined as a separation of wood through the piece of lumber on the opposite or adjoining side so again split the check is from drying it 
the split occurs naturally, okay, or, or some type of stress or something that pulled it apart. It could be only part way through. I don't know if you can actually see it. There's a very small, you know, check or split right there that doesn't go quite all the way through, and it's very narrow as well, so it's sort of not, doesn't really matter, but I'm just saying it doesn't do anything to the integrity of that piece of wood in particular. Although, if you were trying to make something and you wanted everything perfect on it, then, you know, you might not want that. So it's sort of up to the person to know what they want and what they're going to need. And then, like I say, a shake is, and, and think of a shake as taking a tree, okay, and shaking it back and forth. What happens is the, uh, the um, annual rings can tend to break apart and move. And that's when you end up with this shake. Now, um, a lot of times I, I had a big hemlock here at about 24 inches in diameter that broke off about 12 feet high. And when I cut it to look at it, it was filled with shakes. And what happened was, you know, I mean, it had shakes all over the place through it on the annual rings. And what happened was this tree sat in a place where it was very windy. It was on the side of a slope that got a lot of uh, thermal uh, heat and wind. And that's what caused it to move so much. So it, you know, it broke off because it just didn't have the strength to hold itself together. So that would be called a check then. And then... Um, Besides that, there's some other things yet, you know, with wood a lot more. But, like I say, I'm, I'm doing the video so that you understand that, you know, if somebody walks in, you, you cut a bunch of wood and they look at it, okay, the boards look nice. And this happens when you're first working with a sawmill. You know, you start getting the board. Man, that first board that comes off of there that's square or rectangular is really, you know, a, a good thing for the heart. It, it really does you good to see that. But then when you start looking at it real close, like the biggest thing that I had cut that was a disappointment was when I had all those ants in the in the uh, one log that I cut up. You know, that was a disappointment because at both ends of the log, it looked like it was going to be a great log. But in the middle, they had gotten in there and, you know, there was no way for me to really know that just by looking at it. So... All right, well, that's the different things of the knots and stuff. And we're talking again about eastern white pine. It's important that you recognize that when I talk about this grading, I'm not talking about hardwoods. I'm talking about eastern white pine, okay? That's, you know, the name that they've given to this different stuff. So red, red knot, red knot up here, black knot. Um, where's that? Uh, Spike knot, okay, it's cut either with the branch or on a diagonal to the branch. And then you have loose knots, fixed knots. And you can just go back over the video and listen to what I was saying there if you need to you try to remember which each of them are. And there is a system in, in effect in the east about eastern white pine. And you, you actually have to have, when you sell lumber, especially framing lumber, it has to be graded and it has to have a stamp on it in order to use it where there's uh, building codes. So just because you cut the lumber from your property does not mean it doesn't meet the standards for good construction grade lumber. It just means that someone who knows about what construction grade lumber is hasn't stamped it and therefore you can't sell it as construction grade you have and you can sell construction grade it doesn't matter if it's rough or plain it doesn't have to be plain to be graded you know it can be it can be unplain but mostly we have we see plain today but um so anyway i hope that that was a little bit helpful in trying to get you started with knowing about this there's a whole lot more to this and i'll bring the videos to you as i get a chance to make them. Alright guys, well, um, in Pennsylvania today, I'll give you an idea, I like doing the weather forecast, we got about two more inches of rain, or yeah, rain, snow. You can see down on the, uh, I have a little pistol table down there, I don't know if it will focus, I guess it won't focus, yeah, there, there it goes, yeah, there it is. That's about that's a two by four on the right side of that thing. Oh, where are we at here? 
on that this side over here. So there's about five inches of snow altogether. And it's only been coming in dribs and drabs, like we had about an inch and a half last night or so. And that's about, you know, as much as we got. So anyway, it's, uh, 22 degrees, I believe, today. So enjoy yourself. I guess a lot of people are doing their Christmas shopping. I know my wife's been doing a lot. I've been doing mine online. I don't have to go in. And I don't mean the store line either. Of course, most of you guys would know that. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye. Hey YouTube. I thought you might want to see this. This is a perfect example of a tree that's forming a black knot. Remember I was talking about black knots the other day? When you uh, are able to know what the tree's doing on the outside, it's going to give you a, a little helping hand of what's happening on the inside. So that tree, you can see both of those. This one and that one is um, a live tree forming around dead branches. So this is another one. This is actually a real good example too. You can see underneath where it's hollow and where the uh, dead branch is being surrounded by it. So that's going to be like a long knot there then when it's uh, done. Long black knot. Because the bark from the live tree right here has actually circled inside of the tree.